you are a winner, good job. And jump again. That's all, you can kite your enemy to death. Bats in PvP. Now guys, let's talk. Welcome guys on my channel and today we're gonna talk about access. Basic things, only basic things. So let's start. We will begin with regular one-handed battle axe. It is basic weapon, it is easy to craft, it is very cheap and to be honest not so strong. But it can be viable in some solo gameplay. So its e ability, it is Vampiric Strike, it deals damage and depend on dealt damage it will heal you up. And this heal amount will depend on your Q stacks. So as you can see, for one charge you will lifesteal only 30%, for two charges 60%, for three charges 100% of dealt damage. So it is very tanky, tanky, tanky weapon. And I want to remind you guys, before we will start, as I was saying in my previous videos with swords, PvE should not be your final goal. It should not be your final goal. In Albion you can PvE even with a spoon. So take it into account. Let's talk about basic abilities on Axis. First Q spell is super useful because it got highest damage among all Q spells per second. And uh, it will help you a lot in PvE part of the game when you will fight bosses or in some scenarios in 1v1 fights in PvP. And on top of that it got the lowest cooldown among all Q spells. Let's talk about the second Q spell. It got pretty unique mechanic. Further your enemy is, more damage you will deal. So if your enemy will be in front of you, damage will be minimal. If he will be further, damage will be maximal. On top of that this ability is perfect for kiting. Yes, even one, uh, not one-handed, all axes with this ability can kite enemies. Not all, not in all scenarios, but it can do it. On top of that, it is must-have option in PvE scenarios, since you can hit several enemies. Okay, guys, uh, now let's talk about third Q spell, Rending Rage. It is pretty unique, since you are making three hits like this. One with tiny delay, second, and the third with a jump and roots. Uh, damage is so so, but um, the difference between other Q spells that you can stack um, bleed on your targets much much faster. In some scenarios, it might be useful. To be honest, in my personal opinion, I don't like this ability. It is unique in some scenarios, in super rare scenarios, it could be useful, but in most of the cases, no. Nah. A regular second Q spell or single Q spell is much, much better. There is one more unique mechanic on these Q spells. When you will um, hit three stacks of bleed on your enemy, the enemy will uh, receive a healing reduction um, debuff on 20%, as you can see in this description, which is, might be super useful in a fight versus uh, enemies that got uh, any uh, healing. Let's talk about W spells a bit. Deadly Chop. Uh, this is actually super strong ability that reduce uh, resistance of your enemy and deal pretty huge damage. With, uh, I would say, low cooldown, but the downside is cast time. is 0.5 seconds. It could be strong on a paper and it could be strong in a group fight, uh, maybe in a fight versus bosses uh, 1v1 in green cellar dungeons but in reality it is super useless ability in pvp super useless just believe me about adrenaline boost in most of the cases it will be your main ability in pvp because it is increasing your move speed and increasing your damage a bit about battle rush ability again on paper it might be good it is a movement spell ability too, but you need a target, ally or enemy and you will reduce um, incoming heal. Which is nice, which is super nice, again, only on paper. In reality, it could be interrupted pretty easy, um, you need a target and pretty high cooldown. 
it got 20 seconds of native cooldown. I got less cooldown because of uh, this torch. If I unequip it, you'll see 20 seconds cooldown and it is a lot, it is a lot. Adrenaline boost is much, much better in most of the scenarios. Internal bleeding. Let's talk about internal bleeding. It is one of my favorite spells. In the long fights, in the long fights, in a small scale PvP, even in some 1v1 fights, especially if you want to kite your enemy via a second Q spell, internal bleeding might be super, super useful. So basically, you are fighting an enemy. Again, this ability is useful only in PvP. Only in PvP. In PvE, it is super bad. You are fighting versus several enemies or only versus one enemy. You are using Q, W and run away. Reduce your cooldown, wait for your cooldowns and uh, slowly, but you will kill your enemy. It is super deadly ability, especially again in small scale PvP. The last one, Raging Blades. This ability is must have in PvE scenarios and in PvP in small scale fights, because these Raging Blades deal insane amount of damage, boosting your damage output and got super low cooldown. But why um, in some scenarios we are taking Adrenaline Boost? Again, Adrenaline Boost is a movement speed buff. And movement speed stat is the most important stat in the game. One of the most important stats in the game. It will allow you to run away, to get your target, to kill it, so that's why people, when you will watch different streams of other people who are playing on Axis, that's why they choose Adrenaline Boost. But in PvE they are switching on these Raging Blades. That's the reason. In some scenarios when you are fighting an enemy that's got low amount of mobility, Raging Blades might be useful. But again, Adrenaline Boost is must have in almost all scenarios. Okay, let's talk about Vampiric Strike. This ability was buffed not a long time ago and now it got 10 seconds cooldown. So basically, depend on your charges, you can lifesteal um, from damage you deal. 3 charges, 100% of damage you deal will return to you as a health via lifesteal. It is lifesteal mechanic. And by the way, one important tip, lifesteal damage and lifesteal bonus is not the same as healing bonus. It is two different mechanics. So keep it in mind, guys. Since it is melee e ability, it is hard to fight in a 1v1 scenarios versus kiting builds. So you need to be always on top of your enemy. That is, by the way, the reason why you are taking adrenaline boost. About passives, guys. On one hand, it access, unfortunately, it doesn't matter what kind of passive you will take. In most of the cases, the most efficient is deep cuts for bleed damage and life leech. That's all. That's all. And I actually recommend you to take these deep cuts. And now let's take a look on solo farm build. Let's imagine you're a new player, you just started playing Albion and you need to focus only in PvE part of the game. And again, I want to remind you guys, PvE should not be your final goal. You can uh, do PvE even with a spoon. So take it and eat into account. But uh, anyway, let's take a look on several builds. First of all, it is Mercenary Jacket with this Bloodlust ability. It got a perfect synergy with this Q spell, which will allow you to heal up pretty, pretty fast. Helmet, Schooler Cowl. It is ideal option to get your energy back because um, Axis in general is very mana hungry weapon. As a damage more damage output, we are taking Tedford Cape. If you are a new player and you don't have money on Tedford Cape, don't worry, you can wear even no cape and it would be fine. Uh, about boots, we got assassin shoes with refreshment sprint. So, about offhand, uh, the cheapest and the most efficient way how you can farm with this one-handed axe is regular torch. Torch. It is pretty cheap and efficient. If you want to play with a shield, you can take face breaker. It will increase your defensives and will increase your damage output a bit. Or you can use any offhand on damage, like Crypt Candle, for example. But again, it will not affect globally your gameplay. So this build is classic for PvE. 
it is fine, it is good, it got energy, it got health, it got low cooldowns, so nice defensives, etc. During PvE, of course, a weak Q spell, the Stranding Blades, and that's all. As a food, very important thing, uh, when you are PvEing, you got two options. First, it is soup. In most of the cases, people are using this one or cheap fish, which will increase your health regeneration when you will be out of combat. This soup, or there is a second option, since it is an X, there is a good synergy with this roast pork. This one, this food. But to be honest, as again, if you're a new player, just take a regular soup or a fish to region up your health uh, fast, and that's all. Don't even. Uh, Think about this roast pork but if you want to try try it um, roast pork is nice in 1v1 fights in corrupted dungeons but we'll talk about it a bit a bit later as a potion as a potion you need to take poison potions uh, right now i have tier 8 but uh, you need only tier 4 poison potions they are super cheap um, you can buy it on the mark on markets and it will help uh, you with your clear speed when you will fight versus bosses just use this in poison potions tier 4 not tier 8 tier 4 on bosses and clear speed would be much much faster what other options do we have we can change our boots Let's imagine you want to farm on Avalonian roads. You need to have demon boots as the first option to make a, to be able to run away from your enemy if you was ganked. Or you can use soldier boots with Wanderlust ability, which is very helpful too and might save your ass. Uh, there is one more broken uh, boots that I was talking in previous video with swords and it is still viable and it is still very good if you are going into open world and you want to focus only in P in PvE part of the game and if you see for example gankers uh, you will be able to run away uh, almost versus everyone. This one, minor work boots. They are super 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 strong. Yes, you will be silenced when you will activate these boots, uh, but the movement speed duration and its bonus is ridiculous, and it will save your life. And the only thing uh, to use uh, these boots, you need to level up your um, gathering skills to open possibility to use these boots. So you need to gather a bit uh, ore to be able to use these uh, minor war boots. Okay, so open world is soldier boots, minor work boots, um, or demon boots. Soldier, minor, soldier boots. If you are going, for example, um, to solo group, to solo green dungeons, you can use these assassin shoes. Why? Uh, if you do not know, when you are entering green solo dungeon in red zone or in black zone, you can wait for 90 seconds and entrance to this dungeon from outside will be closed and you will be totally safe. So in such a way you don't even need to afraid that someone will gank you. That's why you can afford to use for example this assassin shoes or any shoes you like to be honest. Any shoes you like, for example you can try the royal sentence but they are pretty expensive but you can boost your damage. Mm, any uh, cloth shoes with regular run but you will take it in most of the cases only because of this passive that will increase your damage you can use it too do whatever you want again i want to remind you pve it is not the final part it is not the final goal that you need to be focused on again guys why mercenary jackets of course you can use spectre jackets with this ability and you can increase your clear speed even more. You can use uh, these stalker jackets with this electric field and uh, your clear speed will be even much higher. But these um, chest pieces are bad in PvP. And this game is about PvP. That's why I suggest you to level up these mercenary jackets. But again, if your aim is only to level up your battle axe, of course you can take these stalker jackets or um, these uh, spectre jackets. But if you, when you play and you want to level up useful piece of gear, ch choose mercenary jacket, 100%. Okay, we talked about other options that are increasing your PvE speed. But what about PvP? 
there are two options. First, it is Hellion Jacket, which will be super useful in small scale fights and in uh, PvE, and the same level as uh, Mercenary Jacket. But this again, Hellion Jacket, again, is super useful in small scale fights, not in solo. In solo, it is horrible choice, just forgot about it. Only if you're playing with friends, uh, try Hellion Jacket. It is a good option. And the second option is Soldier Armor. Yes, with Battle Axe it is not uh, <laughs> the best way to go, but later, when, for example, you want to try other axes, Soldier Armor could be useful. It really could be useful. Not in all setups. For example, this setup that you see right now on the screen, it will be nice anyway in PvE. In PvP it will be useless, Mercenary Jacket will be much better, but in later stages of the game, when you want, if you would like to change your Battle Axe on the another axis, uh, and we'll talk about it later a bit, uh, Soldier armor, armor is pretty good choice too, so if you want to PvE even with this Soldier Armor, later you will not regret about it, especially if you will take Halberd, but we'll talk about it a bit, a bit later. Mercenary Jacket in 1v1, in some small-scale PvP fights, in corrupted dungeons on Wallonian roads, it could be useful. Hellion Jacket is good option for small-scale fights only and in PvE scenarios. And Soldier Armor is nice in PvE, it could be viable, but uh, it got bad synergy with Battle Axe. The most uh, efficient way how you can use the Soldier Armor will be with other axes. But again, anyway, if you want to level up it, do it you will not regret about it if your aim will be a small-scale fight. Soldier armor is still a viable and good choice. But I recommend to use Mercenary Jacket as your first ja jacket piece. Okay, <laughs> let's move further. If you want, if you want to change uh, your helmet, you can do it. You can do it, you can change it on Guardian Helmet, it is super useful in PvP too. Uh, you can use Hunter, Hood, which is a good option. In Corrupted Dungeons, uh, for example, you can use Fiend Cowl to purge your enemies to remove buffs, but you need to remember that you will have problems with energy. That's why you need to have Limphurst Cape. Let's imagine you don't want to use this Limphurst Cape. You don't like it, you want more damage. Okay, it is fine, you can do it. But anyway, you need to have some sort of energy source and this source will be schooler sandals because when you will use them it will region your mana on top of that it uh, protects you versus uh, stunts which could be useful in uh, corrupted dungeon scenarios when you are fighting for example black hand user i hope these tips were useful how you should build your build <laughs> in open world uh, or for solo PvE. Okay, it was just a PvE part. But what about PvP? First, in open world you can PvP with the same items that I was uh, showing you, with, only with mercenary jacket. Uh, PvP is possible only with mercenary jacket and that's all. For open world, again, you can use soldier boots or demon boots. I do not recommend you to use leather boots, because you will have low, low mobility, so I forgot about it. But you can kill people with this setup, you can, you can. And about PvP, there is one more option. Uh, on helmet, you can use this Spectre Hood, this one. Spectre Hood will refresh your jacket, which will give you much more survivability which is super useful in 1v1 scenarios. But it is very expensive, that's why I did not talk about it a lot, but it is super useful. Again, let's return back to open world. For open world, soldier boots, demon boots and minor war boots. And that's all. Let's talk about corrupted dungeons. To be honest, Corrupted Dungeons is not the best uh, content for one-handed decks. Don't get me wrong, you can kill people with one-handed decks. You can. Again, your option, you got only one option. Mercenary Jacket. You can combine it with Hunter Hood, with Guardian Helmet, with Fiend Cowl, 
Mm, or with Spectre Hood. This one. This Spectre Hood to refresh your jacket ability. The only issue will be your mobility. So you need to take mm, Soldier Boots in most of the cases. Soldier Boots is must have. About Cape in Corrupted Dungeons. First option Tetford Cape. Increase your damage, will increase your damage a bit. Uh, second option is Lamphurst Cape. It will not be a mistake, especially if you will fight um, a kite builds, different kite setups. Lamphurst Cape might save your ass because, as I said before, axes are energy hungry weapon. Yeah, in most of the cases, uh, you will not have any problems with energy. You will die fast, or your enemy will die fast. So you would be fine. But if you will take Lumhurst Keep, it will not be a mistake. Especially if you want, for example, to kite your enemy via second Q spell and uh, with internal bleeding, which is possible, or with adrenaline boost. So in this case, uh, Lumhurst Keep might be useful. Third option that I like, actually, is uh, Bridge Watch Keep, this one. But as for if you are a new player, I do not recommend you to use it, you need to get used to its mechanic. That's why Keep in mind only two capes, Tetford's cape and Limhurst cape, that's all. About offhand, again, many will depend on your playstyle, but all options are viable. Torch is good, it will reduce your cooldowns, it will increase your attack speed a bit, uh, you can use Mist Collar, Crypt Candle or Face Breaker. To be honest, I like Face Breaker more. It is my favorite choice uh, if you are talking about battle axes. About food. In PvP, roast pork with this lifesteal passive is super useful. Is super useful and nice, nice, really, really nice ability. And I recommend you to use it in PvP. Anyway, you need to carry soups. For example, when you are fighting an enemy and you are need to run away and region up fast, you can swap your food on soup, activate it, and region up your health while while you are not in combat. Then switch to your PvP food, activate it and go into a fight one more time. Very common question on my streams mostly is how to counter black hands. Black hands are so strong, etc. Yeah, they are strong and they might be there might be a problem for a one-handed X2. So the easiest way how you can counter black hands, and not only black hands, uh, bolt casters, claymores, is resist potions. Resist potions, this one is super super useful when you see that your enemy is going to burst you down just use this one major resistant potion and you will be fine just leave long enough to survive his two combo if you're talking about black hands or versus uh, versus claymore one combo and then only then activate your jacket and try to heal up and get your health back on top of that, very useful tactic versus black hands is to use rending spin and this internal bleeding, which is super nice, super nice ability. But anyway, I recommend you to use adrenaline boost just in case because you will be able to reset fight if you will be in trouble or if you will press your buttons incorrectly. So for corrupt dungeons, again, only mercenary jackets with hunter hood, guardian helmet, or fiend cowl, or this one. Uh, Spectre Hood. Spectre Hood is the most exp the most expensive item, so if you want to try craft dungeons, uh, if it will be your first exp experience, yeah, try another helmet. When you will be sure that you are ready to spend more money, then you can try Spectre Hood. Again, boots. In most of the cases, only soldier boots. Forget forget about other boots. Forget. About food, there is also one more option in PvP. This eels too is actually expensive, yeah, but it's super useful since you will be able to reduce your cooldowns and increase your damage. So take it into account that if you have money, you can try this dead water eels too in PvP. If you want to have um, budget build, um, super budget food, you can use omelets. Omelets is also a nice option. This one, pork omelet. Yes, it will give you useless uh, buff that will increase your cast speed. It doesn't matter, but it will reduce your cooldowns drastically. 
which will increase your mobility and damage output with your spells, which is super useful. And about PvP. If you're fighting an enemy um, that got no burst damage, poison potions is a perfect way to go, is the best way to go. Versus, for example, um, kite builds like Bow of Bottom, I recommend you to use regular healing potions. Regular healing potions is a good option. So it was Corrupt Dungeon scenario. What about small scale fights? Let's imagine you are playing with friends, three, four, or five friends together, and you want to participate in PvP with one hand attacks. It is not the best way to go. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. One handed X is not the best weapon for such content, but it is still possible. If you, again, I was saying always one thing you need to enjoy your gameplay, you need to enjoy your time when you are playing Albion. So, if you want to play one, with one handed X, you can do it. You can do it. And for such cases, Hellion Jacket is must have option in small scale PvP with Spectre Foot. You will gain lots of survivability and you will be super super tanky. As a foot, no, nah, you should not use healing potion or poison potions, especially if you've got healer behind. For as a potion, you must use resist potions. It will mm, increase your defensives. On top of that, your crowd control resistance will be insane and uh, will allow you to deal damage basically and will not reduce heal um, income from your allies so resist potions is must have as a foot again in small scale pvp you can use foot your whatever you like whatever fit your play style if you like more survivability you can take roast pork for lifesteal if you want to have more damage you can even take regular stew this one but for example you want to reduce your cooldowns on top of bonus damage you can easily take that water eels too and it will not be a mistake about cape why limhurst cape again access energy problem energy problem access especially in a long fight a limhurst cape is must have as boots if you are mm, roaming in open world on Avalonian roads soldier boots might be a good option but but if you will fight a decent group of people assessing shoes with refreshing sprint or with regular dodge might be a bit more useful but you need to take into account that your mobility will be low also you can use even stalker shoes with blink again fast rotation in a group fight is very important so take into account these boots are useful too if you don't like to use Limhurst Cape, you can equip Martlock Cape for more defensives. You can equip Tetford's Cape for um, more damage out. Where it is? Tetford's Cape. But, again, mana. In this case, take Schooler Cow to make sure you will have no problems. For group PvP, you can use Rending Spin or the third Q. Actually, I recommend you to use Rending Spin. It is the most efficient uh, Q spell in small scale PvP on X on the whole X line. In this case, if you are fighting group versus group, you can take Internal Bleeding or Raging Blades. These two abilities will boost your damage output, damage per, sen per second, drastically. Drastically. So choose between these two abilities. In some scenarios, Deadly Chop might be good if you're assisting one target, one target, and you need to kill it fast. But it is very risky and guys, just forgot about Deadly Chop. It is good ability, but not in small scale PvP. Choose between between internal bleeding and raging blades. And as about potion, I already told you. Offhand, again, could be whatever you like. I think Face Breaker is the most balanced offhand for one hand attacks. About ZVZ. This weapon is unplayable on ZVZ. Just forgot about it, delete it from your enemy. This is horrible weapon for ZVZ. 
just forgot about it. Now guys, let's talk about one of my favorite weapons among all X line. It is Great Axe. This, 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 this weapon. I love it. I really love it. It is super cool, super nice. But let's start with PvP. Why with PvP? Because it will not be... It will not take a long time. It is super use, useless. Useless. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong. You can kill people. You can kill people even in corrupted dungeons 1v1. I was doing it on stream uh, only for fun. I was uh, doing PvP in open world with great axe. It is fun weapon to play on. But it is very weak. This E spell is easy to interrupt. Easy to interrupt and got pretty long cooldown. 20 seconds. And it is hard to synergize your E spell with your Q spell. That's the main issue. But, oh, okay, before we we'll, we'll talk about PvE, again, PvP, forgot about it. It is super weak. There are much better options for PvP. But PvE part, it is the king. First of all, price. It is pretty cheap. Great Axe is super cheap weapon and super efficient if we are talking about uh, mobs clearing so classic build the same items as with one hand attacks school of cowl for mana mercenary jacket for survivability uh, assassin shoes for re to reduce your cooldown and tet for escape again the same the same rules uh, with armor pieces if you want to use another helmet Please use Limhurst Cape for mana, or uh, choose Schooler Shoes for mana. In this case, you can replace your um, cape on something else, like uh, Tetford Cape, and your helmets, for example, on um, whatever you want. Literally, whatever you want. Even Mage Cowl, this one with poison that will increase uh, damage to one tar target, or even Cultist Cowl. You can use the same items that I was showing you before with one hand attacks to clear mobs in solo dungeons and in open world. The same rules. If you want to go on other road, it could be Minor Work Boots, Soldier Boots and Demon Boots, if it were talking about open world. For solo dungeons I showed you, it is mercenary jacket, schooler cowl and any leather shoes with refreshment sprint with great ox. And you are ready to go. Now let's move on to corrupted dungeons. Corrupted dungeons is very specific content. And don't get me wrong, you can kill people with great ox. Of course you can, with different setups, even with mercenary jackets. You can try to outplay it, but this weapon is too weak for 1v1 fights. That's why people are mostly using this Great Axe to red Corrupted Dungeons. And now let's talk about this red. Uh, which means, by the way, if you did not know, uh, to kill only mobs, bosses and avoid all PvP fights. So basically you will just do only PvE part of the game in this uh, PvP activity. So, for Great Axe, my favorite build is, uh, of course, with Adrenaline Boost if someone invading you, this ability, if you are farming, you are taking Raging Blades. Of course, AoE Q spell. Uh, this Cultist Cowl, which will increase your single target damage drastically. And this Assassin Jacket, with invisibility to take off aggro and reset fights. Which is super useful. As boots, you have an option with Soldier Boots, with Leather Shoes on, um, with Refreshment Sprint, and Minor Work Boots, that I was showing you before. It is for Gathering or this one, Tier 4. Would be enough. Would be enough. But I recommend you to take this Soldier Boots, since you, can, you have an option to use Regular Run or Wanderlust. Depends um, what enemy is, what kind of build uh, is diving you. During PvE part, of course, you will use this Inner Corruption spell to increase your clear speed. But in PvP scenarios, you need to switch your abilities. For example, when you see that someone is diving you, you can switch your ability on Force Field. Uh, and of course, take Adrenaline Boost. Why Force Field? 
it is basically a knockback. If you see that your enemy got high amount of mobility, you can just uh, knock back him and run away from him, which is super useful. Again, assassin jackets mostly to reset fights. But be careful, there are mobs in corrupt dungeons, um, these demons that reveal you from invisibility. So take it into account and play very, very carefully. To remove energy problem, you need to take Limphurst Cape. Of course, there is an option to take Schooler Sandals with Focus Run, and in this case, you can change your Limphurst Cape on something else, for example, on Tetford's Cape to increase your uh, clear speed. But the downside of these Schooler Sandals is that uh, some mobs in Corrupted Dungeons got silence. They got silence, and this silence can easily interrupt your uh, Focus Run ability. In this case, if you will fail, or if your enemy will out, your enemy will outplay you, you might die. That's why I prefer actually Limhurst Cape uh, with uh, Soldier Boots. In my opinion, it is the most stable option how you should play. And don't forget, your E spell gives you movement speed bonus too. So don't forget to combine it. Use Adrenaline Boost, boost first, and then E spell, and run away. Poison Potions is your must-have option in Corrupt Dungeons. Again, not tier 8, tier 4 to clear um, bosses much, much faster, to clear mobs much, much faster. But when someone is invading you, I strongly recommend you to switch your potion to Resist Potion. This one. So, you see that... Uh, let's imagine scenario. You are fighting a mob. Boss, doesn't matter. You are fighting, 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 fighting. Someone is invading you. You are switching your abilities to Adrenaline Boost and in Force Field. But sometimes you can actually keep this Inner Corruption because um, this Inner Corruption will help you to destroy pillars, these crystals, much faster to banish your enemy. But if you want to play um, much more safer, Force Field uh, might be a good option too. On this ability, and switch your potions. And that's all. You're banishing your enemy and keep your farm. That is all you need to know about um, Corrupted Dungeons. Unfortunately, again, it is not the best weapon to play in 1v1 scenario. It is not. So don't even try it. Of course, you can try if you are an experienced player to have some fun, but in general, nah. You will, you will die. You will die. About Group PV. about group pvp and in group pvp in small scale again not the best weapon to play on but you can deal some sort of damage again thanks to the second q spell thanks to internal bleeding or raging blades and if you combine it correctly with whirlwind with its e spell when you will wait until your enemy will waste all their crowd control abilities which is super super rare you can deal pretty decent damage you can but it is pretty hard to be honest it is really really hard because again easy easy to interrupt but if you want to participate, your choice is Spectre Hood, Hellion Jacket, Limphurst Cape for mana. Again, Assassin Shoes as in previous example, but it is risky. In open world on Avalonian Roads, you can take Soldier Boots if you're playing with group on Avalonian Roads. Or if you're playing in big fight, you know what? Nah, Stalker Shoes will be a bad option. Don't even try to take Stalker Shoes. It is really a bad option. You can try, of course, uh, Royal Sandals in small scale PvP. It would be... Risky, but efficient way how you can uh, deal damage. You can you can try it. And again, no poison potions in group fight. Only resist potions, especially if you got a healer. The same rule with energy. You remember, if you don't want to use Spectre Hood, you can use School or Cowl with, uh, for example, Marble Keep. But in this case, you need to count on the, on School or Cowl if you will have problems with energy. If you don't want to use Cooler Cowl, the same thing. Change on something else, but in this case, change your boots on um, Cooler Sandals. And you will be fine. There is one more build for Group PvE versus mobs. 
and actually I really really love it. Let's imagine you are playing with friends, you want to farm group dungeons with three men or even with two men. Mostly I recommend you to go with three men minimum. You got a healer behind your back and you will play a tank role, but not with regular weapon like maces or hammers, but with a great axe. And yes, this weapon can do it. So you are taking this passive that regenerates your threats. You will use soldier armor with school or cowl with Tetford Keep with assassin shoes to refresh your cooldowns, and you will be fine. You will keep your aggro, will deal insane amount of damage. You will be super useful in some in this type of PVE. Long time ago, when there was an open beta test of Albion. This build was actually super, super efficient and super, super pop popular. And it is still very, very popular. So I strongly recommend if you want to play on that, if you want to tank in PvE with small group, three people, for example, this setup is pretty decent. Or, for example, you want to tank mobs on Avalonian roads with a healer behind your back. This build is viable. Again, about food. You can use uh, in all scenarios that I was talking before and uh, in this scenario. Will depend only on your own playstyle. It could be stew, it could be eel stew, it could be uh, food on live steel, uh, this one, roast pork, or even regular omelets. Whatever you choose, it will not be a mistake. My all will depend on your own playstyle and uh, how you want to play the game. That's all. About ZVZ. In ZVZ it is not viable at all. Uh, yeah, my, you might saw several videos on YouTube how one guy was dealing insane amount of damage uh, with one combo, but it is suicide build. I can show you. So it is hard to talk because it is super fun, but at the same time super useless build. <laughs> you can deal insane amount of damage, but it is purely suicide build. And here you go. Royal Sandals, Spectre Jacket, Knight Helmet, Keeper Cape, and Tier 8 uh, Great Axe. And of course, uh, must have option, it is Roast Pork, and um, it is Life Steel Food. So your combo is uh, Press Boots, W, Helmet, and E Spell. Of course, uh, activate your jacket first, like this, 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 Helmet, and E Spell. And you are dealing insane amount of damage, and especially if someone will hit you and deal 30% um, of uh, damage to you, your cape will be activated and you will boost your damage output even more. Why this helmet? This helmet mm, makes you immune, immune to different types of knockbacks. And in ZZ, in this madness, uh, in large-scale fights, Knocks back, knockbacks will be non-stop from tanks, from wind walls uh, abilities. That's why this helmet is must-have in such scenario. Okay, guys, and now let's move on to the next weapon. It is Realm Breaker. Who? It is super strong. Uh, again, about solo PvP, PvE, etc. All the same. All the same items. All the same rules with boots, etc. About Corrupted Dungeons. Corrupted Dungeons is, of course, playable with this weapon, but it is so expensive and uh, you will not have high win rates anyway. But if you want to use this Realm Breaker, you can, you can. But with uh, Bloodlust, must have Bloodlust option. Ideally, you need to have Spectre Hood to refresh your Mercenary Jacket. You need to have Tetford Cape or Limhurst Cape. Uh, depends on again on your playstyle. I actually recommend you to use Limhurst Cape, Cape because mana mana will be a problem. As boots again, assassin shoes or soldier boots. But why I do not recommend you to play in corrupted dungeon uh, with this weapon? It is super expensive. It is insanely expensive and efficiency is okay. It is all right. Yes, you will be able to kill people. Uh, but if you will lose, you will lose a lot. You will lose a lot of silver, and uh, there are much more better options. And about these options, I will talk. I will talk a bit later. The main power of this build is in small scale PvP. 
It is so strong. It is one of the strongest weapon in small scale PvP. Why? This e spell is a leap, 10 meter leap. It deals insane amount of native damage, 1000. Uh, of course, with maximum spec, uh, but it doesn't matter. Native damage is pretty decent. But the most important thing that it reduce enemy maximum health to, on 20 percent which means that uh, your enemy with this debuff will take 20 percent more damage you can erase people in a few seconds especially thanks to your teammates if your teammates got uh, any type of damage they can erase your targets like this you are using e spell you deal them um, huge amount of damage and debuffing them. On top of that, 25 seconds uh, cooldown is not a lot. So, the main build is this one. Spectre Hood, Hellion Jacket combo to be as much tankier as you can <laughs> in the front lane because you will fight in the front lane. Limp Escape to get energy back when you will be on low mana. And about shoes. Assassin shoes with a refreshment sprint. Sometimes people are using to burst enemy even more these royal sandals, which is a very good option too. Uh, or soldier boots for an open world if you are fighting random people on Avalonian roads with a group of two or three people. Soldier boots might be a good option too. So your W abilities in small scale PvP. It is Raging Blades, again, internal bleeding, but in some scenarios this Adrenaline Boost might be useful. Why? Because, as I was saying before, this native damage from e spell is pretty huge. And you can boost this uh, native damage via this W spell. So, if you take Adrenaline Boost in some scenarios, it would not be a mistake. It would not. On top of that, you will get more mobility. So, for example, you are rushing on your enemy, you are jumping, like this, using your Q spell and getting back, if you are in trouble. The same rule for uh, potions as I was saying you before. If in small scale fights, only resist potions. The only downside of this weapon, it is so expensive. It is too expensive. But it is worth it. So, about um, ZVZ fights. It can be useful too with the same items but uh, if you want to participate in zvz i actually recommend you to use cleric cowl because this cleric cowl could save your ass let's imagine you are in trouble uh, tank just stunned you and you see that uh, you will die soon you can just press this d ability even when you are crowd even if you are stunned for example and you will be safe you will win some time to activate your resist potion and run away or to use your e spell to run away and double your spell and you will be all right so in zvz clever cow would be a better option but for small scale fights the spectre hood of course you can even equip this garden helmet it will not be a mistake to try different uh, scenarios or even fiend cow let's imagine you are fighting with a group group versus group you are see uh, that enemy got a regular bow this regular bow buffed uh, used their main ab abilities w plus e spell and now he will burst your allies soon pretty pretty hard you will just jump on him dispelling him and that's all you are fine you are fine, you are winning the fight, you are a winner, good job, that's all. So don't for, don't uh, afraid to try different stuff. Or you can use Cooler Cowl and take a uh, Martlo Cape and be tanky, tanky, tanky as hell. It will not be a mistake too. So, for solo PvP, it might be viable, yes. It, with previous setups that I was telling you before, with mercenary jackets, uh, with even with this Hellion jacket, it might be playable. On the Bologna roads, it might be playable. But remember the rule with the boots: soldier, demon, or miner. But the most pow pow powerful scenario where this weapon is efficient is ZVZ small scale. And now let's talk about Halberts. This weapon got perfect synergy between Q and E spell. Basically, when you will use Q spell, your 
debuffing your enemy, they will take bleed damage, and when you use E spell, you will refresh the Q stack on one enemy and will spread all stacks to another enemy. Basically, you will kill your enemy in a slow mode, but it is very efficient. In what scenario? In scenario, for example, when you are playing as two men with a healer, and ideal option is great nature. There are lots of uh, videos on YouTube and uh, maybe you heard some stories when two people were killing a group of people, not easily, but they were able to kill a group of people as two men. And in most of the cases it was some sort of X and healer. And this X was Halbert. This is very strong weapon in small scale fights. And also in ZZ, but uh, about ZZ we will talk a, a bit later. I recommend you to use internal bleeding or raging blades. Personally, I like internal bleeding more. So, your cho your choice of chest will be soldier armor with Tetford cape with schooler cowl, or you can use hellion jacket with the same items, or you can replace it to specter hood. And if you need, if you will have mana, of course, take limpers cape. If you want to use another cape, take Tetford cape and schooler sandals. The same rule as with other mm, axes. Literally the same rule. About ZVZs. Again, the same items that I was showing you before, but you must use this cleric cow. Again, so you got only two options how you can um, gain your energy Schooler Sandals or Limhurst Cape. Choose whatever you like more. For example, you want to keep uh, this Limhurst cape. In this case, you can choose change your boots on anything you like. On Blink, on Royal Sandals, on Soldier, even on Soldier boots, in on regular run, or on or on refreshing sprint. It doesn't matter. If you want to use another cape, for example, for more survivability, you can take Martlo cape. But in this case, you must have these cooler sandals because again, mana, mana, again, mana. Why cleric cowl? The same uh, reason as with the previous weapon, as with uh, this realm breaker. If you will make a mistake, and probably there will be such lots of such scenarios in ZVZ when you will be stunned and you need to survive uh, enemy burst damage, this ice block is must have ability. It will save your ass. Returning back to small-scale fights, in some scenarios, again, you can use Mercenary Jacket, but um, Mercenary Jacket is useful only when you got no healer behind, because uh, this Bloodlust is a heal, and if you will use Bloodlust at the same time when healer, uh, ally healer will heal you, you will have a healing debuff which will reduce your survivability drastically. That's why for small scale fights mm, you need to use Hellion Shackets. Again, solo, you can. You can, but you need to use Adrenaline Boost properly. You can try to kite your enemy via Q, E spell... But no, nah. again, there are much better options. Let's move on to another weapon. Let's move on. Next weapon is... Carrion Collar. This weapon regarding solo PvE. Yeah, you can use it. It doesn't matter. With the same items that I was suggesting you before. Literally the same. The same rules. Nothing has changed. Mm, but again, for 1v1, this weapon is not the best. Uh, it got specific mechanics. So basically, it is a range nuke that deals um, instant damage and damage over time. Um, and while debuff from this E is active, your enemy will receive um, much less healing. On 30%, uh, healing will be produced. That is basically the reason why people are taking this weapon. It is super useful in 5v5 in small scale PvPs. In ZVZs, it is not the best way to go. I do not recommend you to take this weapon and uh, just don't use it. There are much better options. But for small scale fights, for 2v2 even Hellgates, this is pretty strong weapon. You can, you can kill it, you can outplay your enemy and 
only thanks to this E ability. About build. If you want to participate in small scale fights, the same items as with previous um, weapons. Spectre Hood, Hellion Jacket, Limbhurst Cape, Assassin Shoes, or for more burst damage you can try to use uh, Royal Sandals. If it is a, for example, Crystal Fight or um, Hellgate, uh, these Cleric Sandals with Blink might be a good option too, or um, these uh, uh, Stalker Shoes. Again, you need this Blink only to rotate fast uh, during the fight to get heal or to finish your enemy. So, for example, you're low health, you're teleporting, getting heal, mobile to right, and then uh, returning back to a fight. That's all you need to know about this weapon. It is purely small scale weapon. That's all. That's all. Again, the same thing as with one handed battle axe, with great axe, uh, with halberd. For 1v1 scenarios, no. Don't use it. For, only for small scale. 1v1, just forget about it. Just forget. Guys, look how cool does it look. Mm -hmm. But it is not so good in PvP. Don't get me wrong, you can kill people with it. You got mobility from W, you can use your e-spell with tiny delay. After tiny delay, you will deal uh, damage to your enemy as bleed damage, which will help you to heal up with your mercenary jacket thanks to bloodlust ability in, in solo fights. Again, in solo fights, in open world, it will help you to clear mobs. Clear speed is actually pretty nice with this infernal scythe. Cooldown is 20 seconds, which is nice too. Um, you can switch to internal bleeding, uh, raging blades depend on, depends on the scenario, but um, since there is a delay, obvious delay on this e spell, it is super easy to block or, or reflect this ability. That's why, thanks to this delay, this weapon becomes super useless in 1v1 scenario. Super useless in 1v1 scenario because enemy will just jump away from you, block, reflect, and you will regret that you casted this ability. But regarding small scale PvP, it could be useful. For small scale PvP, again, the same build with Hellion Jacket, Spectre Hood, Limpherscape, the same rules as with uh, other mm, weapons. But there is one tiny trick mm, with this weapon, which is super unique and interesting. I'll show you. So, basically, you're riding in an open world. And yeah, you need to use uh, these abilities, these items. Keeper Cape, Hunter Hood, mm, Hellion Jacket, Soldier Boots or Demon Boots. Or even Minor War. But I actually recommend you to use Demon Boots or Soldier Boots. You are riding in open world. You see gankers. They are trying to kill you. They are dismounting you. You are not on your mount. They are dealing insane amount of damage. Then, if they activate this Keeper Keep, you are just pressing this W. E-spell. And this E-spell is not interruptible. In most of the cases, they will not be able to react in time. And if you will be able to land your E spell on Gankers when your Keeper Cape is active, when your W spell is active, you will erase these Gankers in few seconds. Also, there is a good option to use Internal Bleeding in such cases, or Raging Blades. Raging Blades at some point would be even uh, more useful um, than Adrenaline Boost. And you will be able to kill solo a group of people. You, you are. It is the, probably the only uh, X weapon that can burst enemy super super fast. It is the only good thing about this weapon if regarding solo gameplay. Of course, it is good in uh, PvE, yeah, but uh, that's all. In Fire 1v1 fight, probably people will just run away from you or will just cut you to death and just kill you. So, about ZVZs. The same scenario. You can, of course, use this weapon in ZVZ, yeah, with the same rules of items that I was telling you before. But it is not the best way to go. 
It is not. You can, but it is not the best way to go. Okay, if you want to, you can use Cleric Cowl with Hellion Jacket and try to do damage to your enemy. But the content where this weapon is useful is only solo PvE, maybe group farm, group PvP, it is actually alright. It is alright. And uh, random group PvP on Avalonian roads, small scale, 2 versus 2, 3, 3 versus 3, etc. And that's all. It is viable, it is okay. About Corrupted Dungeons, uh, no, guys. Corrupted Dungeons is all about kite and movement spell abilities. Unfortunately, it is pretty easy to predict E spell, uh, avoid uh, damage from this weapon, so no. No, 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 no. You, can, you cannot even mm, rat efficient, uh, with high efficiency if you will use this weapon. You cannot do this. I know it looks cool. But in reality, this delay, uh, this obvious delay, makes this weapon unplayable in um, 1v1 and in some scenarios in small scale fights. Food, the same as with other weapons. It is the same. And the final weapon, the meta right now, and the most strongest X among all Xs. Right now, it is beer pose. Hoo hoo hoo, guys! Lately, it was buffed. It was so buffed. <laughs> it is very scary. So, basically, your e spell is a leap, very fast leap. Yeah, it could be interrupted, but uh, mm, game developers mm, increase jump speed drastically, so it is super hard to do it right now. But you can inter it can be interrupted. The main thing is that if you will hit uh, at least one enemy in PvP, cooldown on this ability will be reduced by 30... Oh, sorry, 40, 40, 40 percent. Just imagine, 40 percent. And take into account that this Ispal got um, perfect native damage, a huge amount of native damage, and on top of that, it got uh, bleeding damage. And this bleeding damage is pure damage. It is true damage. You cannot uh, resist this amount of damage. It is insanely, insanely good weapon for clearing mobs, uh, for PvP. And I don't know what to say. It is the best option among all axes. On top of that, you also can still can use this ability as mobility spell and just run away from your enemy. If you see that something goes wrong, you can just uh, click W E spell and run away. Okay, uh, about uh, solo farm. The same items that I was telling you before with other weapons, nothing has changed, nothing has changed. The only difference is that uh, clear speed would be a bit lower than on Great Axe. And I remember, I was saying Great Axe is the king of PvE, and Beer Pose can clear plus minus the, with the same speed. Only thanks to this pew damage that uh, this, this E spell got. Because pew damage deal insane amount of damage to mobs. Uh, that's why clear speed is super crazy. About build in solo PvP in Corrupt Dungeons. This is one of the options. Spectre Hood, Mercenary Jacket, Soldier Boots, Tetrot Key. You got several options of your helmet. First, it is... Um, sorry, not this. Hunter Hood, but actually I don't recommend you to use it because soon uh, Reflect Mechanic uh, will be nerfed on the next global content update. That's why... Uh, try something else. It is viable, don't get me wrong, this Hunter Hood is viable, it could be useful, but I recommend you to think about uh, other options. Like, for example, Fiend Cowl, which will purge your enemies. Super useful, if you see that enemy use some sort of buff, like Mercenary Jacket, you can easily purge it, or Movement Spell Abilities, you can easily remove it. Second option is Guardian Helmet. Yeah, Guardian Helmet. It will help you to fight versus other. 
a beautiful user, it will help you to fight versus curious players versus both buttons. This shield is really huge and also it removes any dot damage. So take into account, try this Guardian Helmet. Again, ideal option is Spectral Hood, of course, but it is too expensive. Mm, and you need to take into account that Beer Pose is expensive weapon too. So if you are ready to play with such expensive setup, built in Corrupted Dungeon, take Spectre Hood and Beer Pose. If you feel that uh, one mercenary jacket is enough, if you know how to outplay your enemy, if you know how to kite, you can of course uh, take Fiendco. About PvP, in 90% of the scenarios you will play with this adrenaline boost. You will play with this adrenaline boost. Basically, you can kite your enemy only thanks to these two abilities. So you see your enemy, use your W, E spell, run it away. Your cooldown will be low, wait for your cooldowns and jump again. That's all, you can kite your enemy to death, especially an enemy that's got a low, low, low mobility. So take into account, this is a very scary weapon, super scary weapon. About other chest pieces, don't even try. The, of course you can tr try different uh, cloth type of armors, etc. But the best way to go is mercenary jacket, in 1v1 corrupted scenario. Um, again, in PvP you will mostly use this rose poke and uh, one exception, one exception that you need to remember. Beer pose got insanely good auto attack speed, which uh, is boosting their um, passive drastically. That's why I recommend you to try, at least try to use this passive increased defense in PvP. It is super good. It is super good. Just try it, you will not regret. I'll, I'm promising you guys. You will not regret if you will try this passive. This increasing your resistance. Um, as boots. Again, soldier boots. I think it is an ideal option because you got an um, opportunity to change it uh, from Wanderlust to regular run. Which will help you in uh, some setups. As foot. Poison potions. If you see, for example, that your enemy is a black hand user, change it uh, on resist potion to block their combo. If you see that, uh, you know what? Even if it will be both button, I wanted to suggest you to use healing potion, but you don't need to. You got so much mobility so that you don't even need this uh, healing potion. If you will not make mistakes, if you play, for example, with garden helmet or uh, with Spectre Hood, you don't even need these healer potions. You can easily kill your enemy with um, poison potions, you will not uh, have any problems. The only issue with this build might be mana in super long fights. It could be an issue. So, if you're ready, if you're ready to reduce a bit your damage, but make sure that you will not have um, energy problems, you can equip Lamprest Cape. It will not be a mistake. It will not. It will not be a mistake. It will be a good choice if you not know what you are doing. If you know how to play versus different setups, later when you have experience, try Limhurst Cape in some long fights. It might uh, save your life. <clears throat> so beer pose are useful not only in PVE. Uh, in corrupted dungeons, they are super nice in on Avalonia roads, in solo, in small scale PvP. Again, uh, items that you should use in small scale PvP. It could be the same Halion jacket uh, with the same items that I was suggesting you before. Halion jacket with Guardian helmet uh, with Limhurst keep. Or if you want to get uh, more survivability, you can take Spectre hood with this Limhurst keep. If you don't want to use Limhurst Cape, change on Martlock Cape or Tetford Cape, and, but in this case, try Schooler Sandals, because small-scale fights in most of the cases are much longer than 1v1 fights, in most of the cases. So, um, but if you are playing uh, with a, without a healer, um, Mercenary Jacket could be a nice option too. It could be a nice option too, it will not be a mistake, so take into account. But if you are playing with healer, Hellion Jacket is must-have option. So try it. About ZVZs, well, in ZVZs you can play, but uh, as a clapper. 
You can of course try to play with Hellion Jacket, with Cleric Cowl, with Ice Block, uh, but... Nah. Your main damage, your main source of damage is not auto attacks, uh, not internal bleeding, etc. Your main source of damage is your Razor Cut. And it can raise people pretty fast. That's why there is one more build. Beer Pose, with Cleric Rope, with Royal Hood, with Royal Sandals. In some scenarios, uh, Tetford Cape might be a good option. It is the first variation of this build. So, it is super, super simple. Again, food should be not roast pork, it probably should be um, regular stew. You are just using your helmet, stacking your helmet, using your boots, activate your armor, WE, jump, deal insane amount of damage, running away. That's all. You are clapped your enemy, wait for your cooldowns and start again. There is much uh, stable uh, option how you can play. Uh, you can use instead of Royal Hood, Cleric. Cleric, Cleric Cowl. Again, the reasons are the same. If you will be in trouble, if enemy is pushing you and you did not react in time, you did not run away, uh, this Cleric Cowl with Ice Block might save your ass. So take into account two options. With Cleric Cowl or with Royal Hood. In my opinion, the most strongest weapon right now, of course, it is Beer Pose. They are super, super strong, flexible, efficient in all type of content. In solo, small scale PvP, Avalonian Roads, even in ZVZ you can clap. Well, you can clap. In small scale fights, it is awesome. It is definitely awesome. On the second place, I would put this Realm Breaker. Oh my gosh, it is so strong actually in small scale fights, thanks to this debuff. If you will play with your teammates, if your teammates will know what to expect from your e spell, from your abilities, if they will press buttons correctly, you can erase your enemies in few seconds. I would definitely choose this weapon, Realm Breaker, as my second X weapon. As the third one, I would of course take, if I would be a solo player, if uh, if I would be, I am a solo player, if my, if my aim would be um, a PvE, for example, pure PvE, cheap PvE build, definitely it would be a Great Axe, tier 8, not tier 8, Great Axe. If I want to participate in small scale fights, in small ZVZ fights, with budget build, but be effective, be efficient, uh, probably I would take Helbert. It is a nice option. It is a nice option. And that's all. Literally, that's all. Of course, um, if I would play, for example, Corrupted Dungeons, not Corrupted dun Dungeons, sorry, uh, Hellgates 2v2, Hellgates... Oh, someone subbed on my channel. Thank you. If I would play um, Hellgates 2v2 5v5, this Carrion Caller might be a good option. But that's all. I hope this video was useful for new players. I want to remind you, it is not a full guide, it is just a short review of all weapon line in what scenarios what weapon would be useful. And that's all. You can try different builds of course, you can try something new, something fresh. On top of that, don't forget that balance is always changing, but the main co concept of this weapon will be all almost the same and that's all guys thank you for watching if you want to check other videos about other weapon lines basic things go on the comment section below there you will find a link on other videos again love you all stay safe guys and bye bye bye